load a track into Tractor S4. It's going to automatically adjust the gains if you have this feature set in, or if you have this preference set in the preferences. Um, so it's mashing up the tracks, but sometimes you might need a little bit of extra push, and that's what the gain encoders are for. So they relatively move the gain to the position that it was set at when you first loaded the tracks into the depth. If you want to reset the gains, just press the encoder and they're both reset to zero. Okay, so now we're going to prep tracks so that they actually mix well. We're going to deal with cue points and beat grids and loops and go ahead and get things um, working well with each other. So this track I've already got a few things set. I'm going to go ahead and just delete those so that we can do them together. Let's imagine that this track was blank and I had just loaded it up, loaded it up. So I would go ahead and the first thing I would do would be to click into grid and then press this nice auto button and then Tractor is going to automatically beat grid this track for us. It's going to drop a beat grid there and stretch it across the track and ideally what we should see here are these white lines matching up with these peaks. If they don't match up you need to use these little buttons here to change the BPM of the grid and make sure that the white lines line up with the peaks of the waveform. Then what we've got is a very, very accurate BPM for this song so that when we sync that BPM up with the BPM of another song, the sync is as solid and clean as possible. Once you've got an accurate beat grid, you can go ahead and lock that. Then we're going to go back into cue and using our controller, we're going to set some cue points. So we're going to go to the beginning of the song, that downbeat, and we're going to go ahead and just press button one. And you can see the button one just turned blue. Button two, three, and four, or cue point pads two, three, and four, are clear. Um, that means nothing is stored in those open slots. They're open. And if we go to the next beat, this one's a snare here, I believe, we can go ahead and store a cue point there. So now we have one and two. We can do this on the fly. Now one thing I want to show you real quickly, when you're doing these kinds of beat jekylls, right now it's all free form, but you can use the quantize button here so that when you jump back to the beginning of the song, it does it in time and everything stays on the one. So no matter what, even if your time isn't perfect, the song stays in time. Sounds pretty good, right? I'm going to go ahead and turn quantize off because it gets a little bit more funky. Now, let's say you want to set a loop at the beginning. Totally logical. First thing I'm going to do is press down shift and the one slot to clear that slot out. Next, I'm going to use the loop encoder. This is the automatic loop encoder and I'm going to select the length of the loop I want. You can see here that the display um, displays the length of the loop that you currently can set. I'm going to pick 16 and I'm going to press that encoder to drop a loop and we'll go ahead and play that see how it sounds. Now, if your beat grid is accurate, then this loop will set in time, and it should sound perfect. Sounds really good to me. So I want to go ahead and store that. I'm going to press, again, an open cue point slot. So I'm going to press this guy here, and you see that he's now green, indicating that there's a loop stored in that position. We can jump between loops and cue points. And it go ahead, goes ahead and activates and continues to cycle that loop. So now let's say that we wanted to modify that loop a little bit. Very easy. We could go ahead and while it's running, turn the encoder to change the length. And if we ever want to deactivate it, all we need to do is press that encoder. Or alternatively, if we set another loop, press the loop active encoder, which deactivates it. Now let's say you're in the middle of the track and you drop a little loop. Maybe it's a short loop and you want to move the loop back and forth. You can use this encoder here to go ahead and move the loop around. Additionally, if you'd like, you can set loops manually. I don't really recommend it because it's challenging to do on the fly. If you don't do it correctly, you might screw it up, but you can. Um, what you would do is go ahead and set the endpoint 
And when you're ready, set the app one. That was pretty accurate, but it wasn't quite perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify the in point and the out point by holding the out point button and using the jog wheel to adjust it. And you can see on the screen that the little triangle moves as the in point adjusts. Now let's say I like that loop, or that, uh, yeah, let's say I like that loop. I'm gonna go ahead and press number four to store that loop in the fourth position. And now I can actually jump in between the two loops. I'm gonna turn on quantize. I actually wanna grab that vocal, so I'm gonna clear that loop, deactivate that guy, and set a new one and lock him. And create a little bit of a, a little bit of a cue point juggle routine on the fly. It's actually really easy to do with the Tractor S4. And if at any time, you just go ahead and clear out all of those cue points and start over fresh. So we just learned how to automatically set up your tracks so that they can sync up with each other um, using the automated sync method. But chances are high you actually want to beat match manually. And Tractor S4 is actually really good for that. That was one thing that was really important to me, that the jog wheels be of high quality, they'd be easy to use, and the pitch faders are nice and long so you can manually adjust. Right now the pitch faders are set to absolute mode, which means even if you sync a track up to a different track, The pitch fader will actually be absolute and reset that value so that right now I'm always at minus eight and plus eight, just like a turntable. This value is editable in the software. You can go ahead and go into the preferences pane here and in transport. So here we are in the preferences window and in the transport section you can see set the tempo range to and you can adjust this. You might make it 20 or 10 or 30 percent. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 8%. So let's go ahead and get a track on the left side. So you can see it takes a little bit longer, but you can get a pretty accurate sync manually on the fly. It's off a little bit, just make a nudge. And if at any time you want to cheat a little bit or you just don't have the time, you can go ahead and hit sync. And if your beat grids are accurate, they'll sound good together. If they're not accurate, they might sound off like that one just did. To fix that, what you can do is manually adjust it, switch to grid, unlock this, and now you actually want to move the beat grid using this button here. Actually, it's this guy. And we're going to move the beat grid until this line is dead center. Because that line was showing the offset between the dead sync position and where I actually moved the track. So now, if we do the same thing, and we hit sync, they should be lined up perfectly. So if you've got some mixes you regularly do, what you'll probably wanna do is manually mix them together and sync them up so they sound really good to your ears and then make that beat grid position adjustment so that when you do hit sync, it always goes right back to that natural uh, mix position that sounds really, really good. Depending on your preference, these faders here, the pitch faders, can be absolute in that they are always plus eight and minus eight relative to the natural tempo of the track, or they can be relative. Uh, in other words, if you hit sync, um, it's the fader position is then relative to the new uh, tempo that that track is at. Let me give you an example by going into the preferences window first, and we're gonna change that setting so that the faders are now relative. I personally prefer relative so that I can use sync to get myself close and then make further fine-tuned adjustments. This is done in the tractor control 
S4 preferences window. Here you've got tempo faders. They're currently set to absolute. And we're going to switch them to relative. So now what happens is if we deliberately adjust this so it's off. And this temp track is playing at 124. 